Hi, this is Joking Jonathan with Mad Science of Southern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. This week I want to actually answer a bunch of questions. I asked you guys last week to write in questions, things that you wanted to know, things that you wanted to find out about, and you guys sent me some great questions and I want to answer them all. Uh, one of the ones that I really like because I'm a flashlight junkie and LED flashlights are the coolest thing in the world in my mind. Why is an LED bulb brighter than a regular incandescent bulb? And there's actually a whole bunch of factors at play here. One, an incandescent bulb, a standard old-fashioned light bulb, actually is made to give off heat, not light. The light is a byproduct, whereas an LED is designed specifically just to give off light. Uh, second, the incandescent bulb is multidirectional. The light goes everywhere. It's not very focused. It goes everywhere. So a lot of it is lost. A lot of that power is lost, whereas the LED is very directional. It sends light in a straight beam, so it doesn't lose as much going from here to there where the incandescent does. Uh, there's also something called color temperature. That white light is perceived as brighter because partially it contains all the colors of the rainbow, whereas the incandescent light is very yellow and just contains that yellow wavelength. Uh, another question we had. Somebody asked us what makes things rust. That is a great question and the simple answer is oxidation. An oxidizing agent and with rust is usually oxygen. That oxygen reacts with the metal and causes oxidation which we see as rust. Interesting fact, believe it or not, your blood oxidizes. When your blood is in your body, it's kind of a bluish purple. As soon as it hits the air though, that oxygen causes your blood, the iron in your blood, to oxidize and rust right in front of us immediately and that's why it looks red. Really fascinating stuff. Uh, we had another question which I really like. Somebody asked if you had a stream of water, like you turn on your faucet and you took a pen and you move the pen near the water, can you move the stream of water without touching the pen to the water? Uh, yes, yes you can. Will you be able to see it? No. Scientifically, it does move. There's something called the Coanda effect, and the Coanda effect is basically attraction of a fluid body, uh, whether it's water or air, towards any still object. Um, it's part of the little, part of what makes planes fly along with Bernoulli's principle. A uh, really interesting way to see the Coanda effect, and I'll just tell you about it. I'm not going to show you guys. I want you to try it at home. Is take a spoon. Um, spoons work best. Forks work. Knives work. But a spoon works best. I want you to hold the spoon. So the curb in the spoon is facing away from the water, okay? Hold it very loosely in your hand and slowly move it towards a stream of water from a faucet. And you're going to get about that far away from it and all of a sudden that spoon is going to feel like a magnet pulls it over towards the water. That's the Coanda effect. And even though it seems like only the spoon is moving, believe it or not, the water does move. But it's imperceptible to the human eye. Scientists can measure it, you can't see it, but that whole thing is the Coanda effect. And it's pretty cool stuff. We had one last question which I really liked and I want to answer that one today. The last question was what makes fireworks the different colors and why do some fireworks sparkle and sparklers in general? What makes things different colors? So what I want to do is I'm actually going to kill the lights in here. I want to make it dark because I want to use a couple of different metals. I'm going to use these metals and these are the same metals that firework manufacturers use. What we have right here is I have just a small bit of camping fuel. It gives off a very, very blue light as you can see. We've got the camp fuel down here. We're going to zoom right in on that so we can see that. And then I have a chemical called copper sulfate. Copper sulfate is a very light blue chemical. That copper sulfate actually, when heated up, even though it's a light blue, gets very green. As you can see, we get a nice green flame from that copper sulfate. And all I'm doing is just I've got a little bit of the copper sulfate on this metal implement right here. I'm going to rinse that off. Then I'm going to use a chemical called lithium sulfate. Lithium sulfate is a very white chemical. What color do you think this is going to turn? Let's find out. As a little bit spills in there, you can see you get this very, very nice red color. Very, very nice red. I like that. That's pretty cool. All right. Next. I have a really cool chemical called iron powder. It's iron shaving. And I have to work quickly because this actually will rust. But I've got some time before it rusts. Look, I've still got a little bit of my lithium sulfate and my, co and my copper sulfate floating around inside my chemicals in there. So. But that's okay because I think you're going to be able to see the iron filings anyway. This is where you get sparkles from the fireworks. That iron gives off these nice sparkles. Let's throw a little bit more on there. It's kind of cool. And as that iron heats up, it sparkles. That's where we get sparklers. That's where we get all those wonderful sparks and fireworks that we love so well. Now I'm going to do one last thing. I want to take all these chemicals. I want to dump them in one container. While I'm doing that, I would like to say, guys, 
thank you. All our fans on Facebook, everybody out there, people who come to our events. We just had a big event called Lab Night. We have all these people out there who are coming to watch Mad Science of Southern Massachusetts and Rhode Island. And you know what? We can't do this without you. So thank you all very much. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and make an executive decision this week. You're all the friend of the week. You guys are awesome. And I want to do one last thing. We've got our fire going. I've got my chemicals. Let's make some fireworks, guys. What do you say? Thank you very much for everything you guys do. Thank you. And we will see you next week with a new question. Next Friday, we will have a new video answer. And let's just go out with some fireworks. Thank you.